Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be preventing online dating flaking. Well, I've got a guy who's been following my work for, I guess, a better part of the past year or so. And he's doing really well with meeting women in person and going out and having dates. But he recently just started dating on Tinder. He's made two dates with two different women, and both of them flaked on him. And so he's wondering, what can I do? Because I don't have this problem when I meet women in person. So obviously, after having since I've already read his email, he's not doing enough to create enough rapport and making the women feel safe and comfortable enough to meet him in person. So I'm going to go through and give him some ideas on what he should be doing differently to kind of tweak what he's doing with his online dating so he doesn't have women flaking out on him. So i got a quote that I wrote, and then we'll go through his email. The quote says, when someone is genuinely interested in you romantically, they are excited and enthusiastic to make plans with you and or give you their contact information. Women need to feel safe and comfortable before they will spend time alone with a man they just met. When it comes to online dating, it's always best to chat on the phone to see if the conversation flows before agreeing to meet in person. It is even smarter to do a Skype video date or FaceTime chat before planning a date in person to ensure they are who they say they are, resemble their pictures, and so you can read their body language and create rapport. The less research and rapport building you do up front before planning a date in person, the more time you will waste with people who don't look like their pictures, who stand you up, and who conversing with in person is like pulling teeth. For men and women, there is nothing worse than being on a date you can't wait to end. And for those of you that have been on many dates on that you for, with people you met online, whether you're a man or a woman. I think every single person has been out on dates with somebody. It's like as soon as you sit down and you start talking to them, you're like, ah, oh, they don't really look like their pictures, or ah, oh, this conversation's not really flown, or ah, oh, it's not really the person I thought they were. That is a double-edged sword with meeting somebody through a dating app or online dating versus meeting somebody in person because when you meet somebody in person you have the chance to look at them you get to ch you can check their whole body out you can see their body language you can read their facial expressions listen to the tone of their voice see how enthusiastic they are about spending time with you versus you know if you're just using like an, a dating app like tinder and you're chit-chatting a little bit and then making a date and then showing up you're, there's gonna be a lot more dates that you're gonna have to go through to actually get somebody that's good versus because i mean think about it. when you meet somebody in person and you ask them out you know you want to go out with them you know you want to spend time with them. you spend a couple minutes or maybe you know 15 20 seconds chit chatting with them but the idea is if you're thinking it from an abundance perspective you're thinking i don't want to waste my time i don't want to waste my time taking blank blanking out an evening or blocking out an evening for somebody getting dressed up, going there, driving there, and then buying them drinks or taking them to dinner. And you, you know, you're five minutes in, you're going, oh, I don't really like this person. You don't want to just up and leave them and say, hey, it's not working out, or hey, I'm not really into you. I mean, some people will do that. But people, people generally want to be nice, but you know, years ago when I did online dating, it's like, it's just so much more work to do that then it was really worth it. So let's go through his email and see what he's struggling with. Hey Corey, I hope you're doing well. Before I get into my question, I'd like to extend my thanks for the wisdom that you're freely putting out into the world. I'm 24 and I've generally had mediocre success with women up until around a year ago when I found your work after losing a pretty hot lady, which after reading a book came to realize was as a result of me acting weak, like a weak, needy bitch. I appreciate the fact that you're honest with yourself and you don't take yourself too goddamn seriously. Because when you recognize your flaws and you recognize what you did wrong, that your approach wasn't working, then you're open to make changes. Anyway, having read your book seven times and now halfway through the eighth, it's easy to see where I was fucking up. Long story short, I was about as useful as a fart in a space suit when it came to understanding women and your work has allowed me to fill in that knowledge gap. So thanks coach. Well, awesome. Good, good for you for the fact that you applied it, learn from my experiences and sped up your success. You didn't have to go through years and years and years of rejection and fucking things up to learn this stuff. You can read a book like mine 
and within a matter of months, you can turn things around. Now on to the question. I have, a, I have had success at dating or setting and going on dates in person and to expand my possibilities, I've recently given Tinder a go and I've set two definite dates. Both of them flaked, later claiming that they had forgotten. Somebody that says they've forgotten, that means they weren't really that into you and you really didn't spend enough time pre-qualifying them, if you will. Because the most valuable gift you can give anybody is the gift of your time. And so that tells me that you're making plans with women that you either shouldn't have been making plans with or you didn't build enough rapport and pre-qualify them in person. Because you think about the time it takes to get a shower, to shave, to get ready, to figure out what you're going to wear, to drive to the venue... The time you sit down there, I mean, you're, you easily spend three or four hours of your time. And if you think about spending three or four hours of your time talking to me, I mean, think about how many different women that you can chit chat with in that period of time over the phone and through a video Skype conversation before you ever set the date. So instead of meeting one woman in person and chewing up three or four hours of your time, you might be able to talk to five or ten different women in that same period of time and when you don't sense the conversations flowing very well or they don't really seem to be that enthusiastic about asking you questions or chatting or it just doesn't seem to flow or you don't like their body language or the tone of their maybe their voice is annoying unless you talk to somebody in the phone you're not going to know these things so Instead of being in a rush just to get a date, it's better to spend your time pre-qualifying, especially if you meet women uh, like through social media. Because over the years, obviously, as my business has gotten more and more successful, I've met a lot more women that are either in the U.S. or that are overseas. And by talking to them, usually through email or chat, and then we move to Facebook Messenger or maybe a Skype video date, or using FaceTime, you know, especially like if I'm gonna hop on a plane and go, you know, if it's a country I've never been to, I'll be like, hey, you know, I'll hop on a plane and go visit something. Like my Brazilian girlfriend was like that. I, I was thinking about a month or two before I met her, I was like, Brazil's kind of always a place I wanted to go. I've always heard great things about Brazilian women. I've met a few Brazilian women in my life. It'd be great to experience the culture. And literally a month and a half later, I got an email from this fucking stunningly beautiful woman who had been following my work, really liked me, was into the same things. And we spent about, we talked for maybe probably three weeks, I think it was, did one Skype video date a week. And I went to see her for the first time a month later. And then after that, she came to see me. And, but when I look at women I've talked to that I've met overseas, there's been a lot more that I've talked to that I didn't actually end up going to meet because I took my time to get to know them a little bit. Think about it. You're going to hop on a plane or they're going to hop on a plane and come see you. Like I remember, I, I, I think I might have written about this in my book, but I, I met this girl. I did talk about this in my book. I met a girl, this is at least 20, 24, 25 years ago. I came up to Orlando to visit a buddy and it was late at night. I was pretty hammered. He was pretty hammered. And this, this bar in downtown Orlando on Church Street was just really dark and I was really hammered. I met this girl. And we, we were making out within like two or three minutes. And we hung out for a while. I don't know, a half hour, hour, whatever it was. And we exchanged phone numbers. I don't know if she was leaving or I was leaving. I can't even remember at this point. But we talked on the phone like the next day and made plans for her to come see me the next week. And so she drove all the way down from Orlando. And then when I opened the door, it's like she had makeup just totally caked on. She had really horribly bad acne and I was thinking this girl's coming to stay with me for two whole days and as soon as I open the door I'm going oh man and that sucks I mean especially when they're gonna I mean it's one thing to go out on a date with somebody and you don't have that kind of rapport but to meet somebody in person that's, that's literally driven three hours to see you and you're kind of stuck with them the whole weekend the idea is it would have been worth my time obviously back then we didn't have Skype video date anything like that with the technology just wasn't worth worth it then but especially nowadays it's like social media or facebook it just being you and posting pictures of things you're interested into people will find you you'll meet other friends that way you'll meet other women that way if you're a woman you'll meet other guys that way and it, it can be a great way to meet people if you want to have a good experience you've got to spend the time 
I would say move it to a phone conversation. And then like what I, I do when I meet somebody from overseas or online is I'll say, well, let's do a Skype video date. And most of them will do it. Some of them will just ghost or disappear after that or say I'm kind of shy or whatever. I'm, like, I'm not going to waste my fucking time because that tells me they're not comfortable. I mean, they've seen me on video, right? They've seen pictures of me already and if they're if they're not willing to talk on video i'm not going to waste any more time because i know there are women out there with super high self-confidence and they're like yeah sure that's great and it makes it really easy you got to be willing to walk away when somebody's not willing to go along with the things you want because if they're not flexible it just is not worth your fucking time i've had i mean i've had emails from guys that met women and only talked via social media they never did any FaceTime chat, they never did any Skype video, and they fly across the world, halfway around the world, to go meet somebody in person, and then within five minutes, they're like, oh, I'm here for a whole fucking week. Or vice versa, they, they the person comes and flies over to see them, and they're like, oh, I gotta spend a whole week with this person. Trust me, and you do that a couple of times, it's you'll be like, oh, Corey was right, I'm gonna pre-qualify them in person for or on video before I ever meet in person. So let's get back to his email. He said, I did the, hey, I saw your profile and I'd like to get together for a drink. When are you free? Well, you're going for the date right away. And I wouldn't recommend that with Tinder because it was like, hey, let's, I would, I would send two or three texts back and forth. And I was like, hey, let's chat on the phone for a bit and say, you know, here's my number, you know, send me yours, I'll call you or you call me. And some women will just send your send you their number. Some women won't send you their number, but they'll call you. And the, so you what you're listening for is you is there rapport, is a conversation flow. If it's not easy to talk to them on the phone, it's not going to be easier to talk to them in person. And if they're evasive and they're not willing to talk on the phone, and just say, well, here's my number. If you want to chat sometime, give me a call and walk away from it. And sometimes those women, a day or two or a week or so later, will say, hey, can we chat? And then after you chat on the phone, I mean, especially if all you've seen is pictures, because think about it, if you're going to take three, three or four hours out of your life between driving and getting ready and blocking out your evening, I mean, a quick 10, 15 minutes on Skype video or FaceTime chat, just so you can see what they look at, you can read their body language or physiology, it's worth it. And if you could look at it this way, if you've got 10 different women that you get to that place and say seven of them will agree to do FaceTime chat, you're not going to go out with all seven of them. You might end up only going out with two or three of them because it just doesn't flow or they don't feel the same thing for you that you feel for them. The key is to not to waste as little amount of your time as possible. Both women had no written profile and their photos were not interesting enough to banner or comment on, either selfies or just with friends. This seems to be about 90% of the profiles so far, so I got straight to the point. Well, somebody doesn't even put down a couple sentences about them, they just got their pictures up, that tells in a lot of cases you're gonna have women that are they're just on there because they like the attention and they like the validation if somebody's serious and they want to meet somebody they're gonna tell a little bit about themselves and that tells me you're a little you're trying a little too hard to meet somebody if you had lot lots of opportunities but very little time you're gonna to want to make sure you're not fucking wasting it especially if you're going to hop on a plane and go visit somebody in another country, or they're going to hop on a plane and come see you. All it takes is one time of spending a weekend with somebody that you don't want to spend a weekend with, and that will fucking change your attitude. Because I know there will be people that will hear that, and they'll just keep doing it anyways. And I'll get an email probably a few months from now, hey, you know what, you're right, I didn't listen to you. I had this girl come stay with me for a week, and I knew within five minutes I didn't want to hang out with her. People are going to learn the hard way. So he said, dates were made with a time and a place, and I left it at that. I didn't call to confirm. I know better than that by now. However, what would your suggestion be here? I would never meet somebody in person without at least talking to them on the phone. And again, if you're talking to all of them on the phone, there's going to be at least probably half of them when you meet them in person. They're not going to be looking as good. 
in person or the vibe just not going to be right. The best thing to think about, you want somebody who's flexible, who's easygoing, easy to get along with. And if they're unwilling after talking for five or ten minutes on the phone to do a FaceTime chat or a Skype video, then I wouldn't be just say, well, I'd really like to chat with you a little bit before we actually meet in person. If you're not comfortable with that, that's fine. But hey, we'll get in touch with me if you ever change your mind. I wish you all the best in your search. Be willing to walk away from somebody that's not willing to do that because that tells you a lot about their personality. If they're easy to get along with and they have a high self-esteem and they know they're awesome and they know they're a catch, then they're like, yeah, sure, let's FaceTime chat. Yeah, sure, let's talk on Skype video. And if they're not willing to do that, then move on to the next. There's plenty of fish in the sea. I know calling to confirm is an insecure thing to do through the world of beta male behavior we live in. If men calling to confirm is a standard practice for women and three and a 3% man comes around and doesn't do it, is she to assume that I have no interest and won't show up because she simply isn't used to this happening to her? Well, again, your problem is you're, I mean, you're just, you're not even chatting. You're not spending any time to create rapport. And therefore, these women have nothing emotionally invested in you because you're just some dude that they exchange one text with. I mean, that's the difference between when you're meeting her in person, at least you can check her out and she can check you out. You know what her voice is like. She knows what yours is like. She can vibe. She can feel you out when you meet in person. And that's being lost when you're trans trying to translate that to online dating. As you can imagine, getting stood up twice sucks. Not for my ego, they're lost, but for the time and evening wasted as a result. Is there a best foot I could put forward here to stop flaking in the future? You're, I, I would send no more than two to three texts back and forth and just send her your number, say, hey, here's my number, give me a call. You know, what's your number? I'll call you. And some women are gonna be comfortable just giving you their number and others will take your number and call you. And some of them will just ignore that completely, and that's okay. You want somebody that's easy to get along with. You have to think of it like a numbers game. I know you state that low attraction generally equals flaking. However, they agreed to a date and give me their number, so at least found me physically attractive. I could have asked them questions to build rapport before the date, though. I know the phone is for setting dates. Well, the phone is for setting dates once you've met somebody in person. But when you've only talked to somebody digitally, again, just like I've talked about in, the, in this whole video, you want to you want to see if the conversation flows. You want to ideally you want to see what they look like on video, because then you're going to get a really good idea if things are going to flow if you actually go to meet them in person. So that's what I would do in that particular situation because I've had a lot of experience with this over the years and I've had plenty, lots of experience wasting my fucking time. And the idea is to work smarter, not harder. So be willing when you're meeting somebody exclusively online like this to at least chat on the phone for five, maybe ten minutes and then move it over to a FaceTime chat or a Skype video. And not every woman's going to be willing to do that. And the ones that aren't willing to do that, just say, hey, well, if you change your mind, here's my Skype username or here's my FaceTime um, address, email address, if you want to get in touch with me. Otherwise, good luck in your search. Again, be willing to walk away. Remember, the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. You want somebody that's easy to get along with, not somebody that's like fucking pulling teeth with to interact with. And I will talk to you soon. Yeah.